Hey, what's going on guys? This is Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone is doing well today. We're going to go ahead and get started All right. here. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, of course, if you guys think that this is beneficial uh, to anyone you know, please be uh, sure to share it. Uh, of course, if you like it, uh, go ahead and like it as well too. Uh, we, do, we will need some feedback letting us know if you guys can hear us okay, uh, if the lighting gets pretty good, and we'll go ahead and get uh, things rolling. So um, again, uh, we want to thank you guys for being uh, here this evening. We know you guys could be anywhere on the planet, but you guys decided to be here uh, during this Facebook Live. Uh, secure the bag. This is going to be our first interview as we're in, as we're now interviewing uh, you know the party bus king of Chicago, um, as I like to say. And it's always good to you know to uh, not only interview uh, you know business owners, uh, but because there's a lot of you guys out there who are looking to start your own business, uh, grow it, take it to the next level. And it's always good to kind of see uh, people you know that are on that are blazing a trail, that are doing the right things in their business. So you guys can go ahead and go from there. So, uh, but to, without any further ado, I do want to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Lance Hall, sir. Thanks again thank for you. thank you <laughs> for uh, doing this interview here. So we'll just jump straight into it. All right. So I do have a few questions for Lance. So hope you guys are ready. So Lance, if you don't mind me asking, um, what made you first off? Well, first off, who are you? Of course, like people just trying to find out uh, who is Lance Hall. Oh, absolutely. So. I think the when we talk about that the fundamental of that question, uh, I always like to go back to the just me my upbringing. Uh, when people look at the finished result of what you've been uh, successful in today, they look at you know this guy must have had the silver spoon, he must have had some financial help along the way. But when I say who I am as Lance Hall, I am that guy that grew up where our family was in a financial crisis. Um, asking just to be a little bit personal because I think that's always important. Uh, we, being me, my brother, my sister, we actually grew up in a basement and we were left there uh, where we were, where we had the actual system, DCFS, come and grab us and took and put us in the system. Um, that I love to I love to be able to share that story because when we talk about where we are now, it helps with creating that foundation. And when we were in the system. When you look at the statistics, it always says, hey, you know what, if this guy is adopted, if they're in a the system, being an African-American on the south side of Chicago, this is their projected outcome. And so growing up, Chicago public schools, when we talk about being structured, the nine to five, the fundamentals of being in the public system, uh, the you're, you're taught to be able to work for a company. That's the ultimate end goal. And we're conditioned when we go to school to be at school at a specific time and at a certain time. And you look at a lot of those fundamentals and you see that manifest itself when you work your normal nine to five. And so I was that guy, just a normal dreamer who really wanted to be able to get my parents out of that financial struggle that they were in and really just provide a way for them. And so that's really just a backstory of who I am, where I kind of grew up south side of Chicago and uh you know where i started from awesome awesome and if you guys heard that okay uh you know here's the deal you know you don't have to have that perfect start uh you don't have to have uh, that quote unquote silver spoon you know um uh, and i would have what i and actually i just learned some stuff i didn't know um about lance here so we'll go ahead and keep going on uh also to let us know if you guys can hear us okay we want to make sure we're not too loud uh of course not too quiet either so thank you guys so much we're going to the next question here now, what job did you have? What was the last job you had uh, before going into the whole entrepreneurship side? So before going into the entrepreneur, I finished my master's degree at Western Illinois University. And from there, when I was at the school itself, I was a member. I am a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I felt like the man. I was the guy to know when I was at the university where I felt like if you didn't have my number, you were probably either new or you were coming from another school. But when I transitioned from my master's degree into what is now, what I now consider the real world, it was a rude awakening because I went into, or I came into the world with two things, uh, debt from my student loans, yep. and also the ability to now have to recreate myself in a different arena, which is called the workforce. That's right. So I, when I actually first came out with my master's degree, there was a level of entitlement, I'll be honest, and life itself definitely humbled me very quickly. That's right. I ended up getting a job, my first job, my first career at uh, DeVry University from one of my friends. 
uh, through networking, and I was actually there being a content developer. Uh, from there, I, I quickly saw the skill set that I learned in college and in grad school, and I always, from that point, I told myself, hey, they set a standard for me to say, within one to three years, this is where you should be at. Right. Well, my first six months there, I felt like I superseded that goal, and what I did, what any normal person would do, which is go to the manager and say, hey, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm measurable to where you guys think I should be at, at a year to three year mark. I want to be able to see if we can do an assessment. And the feedback that they gave me was, Lance, you just started here. There's no way that you can be at that caliber because you don't have the time in yet. Right. And that's when I realized that, you know what, I am allowing somebody else to dictate my level of ceiling when it comes to being successful. And I had a problem with that because mm -hmm. I feel like, one, as African Americans, we're already behind. And I always use the analogy when I go to the airport and they have those escalators that you can walk that propel you forward. That's right. If you, if you decided to walk at the same pace, African Americans, I feel like, are on the, on, on the actual walking side. Right. And every other race is on that escalator. Right. So we have to run double time yeah. just to be able to be at that same level set as, as the other. Right. And so um, it wasn't until that point I realized, you know what, I have to do something different. Right. And as long as I can do something different from what I'm currently in, it yeah. has to be greater. Right. Because it's just like an off and on switch. If you don't like the dark, opposite of that is the light. Right. You know, and that's when the light switch came on and said, you know what, Lance, you have to do something different. You may not know what it is just yet, but it has to be something. This can't be life. Right. You know, and that that's where that was my first job and that's when it kind of clicked on to me and that said, you know what, Lance, now is now is the time to change. You know, it's so good that you brought that up because I think a lot of people, um, they'll have that moment in which, uh, you know, something that happened in their life or, of course, in the, at that job. And they say to themselves, you know what, this may not be my future. Right. You know, uh, and then I think that what a lot of people end up doing, they'll keep that same mindset and then they'll just change jobs. Right. Or what they'll do is they'll change states and then still get a similar or the same job. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, for those who are watching, we're never knocking, you know, W-2s, anything like that at all. It's just that sometimes, you know, you have that entrepreneur spirit. And you just say, you know what, I'm just gonna go out here and at least give it a try. All that plays a role when you at least give it a try. Mm -hmm. You know, so now why, um, of course, I know making that transition was tough, especially when you have a solid job. And, um, and when you go from that having that solid income, that solid job, what made you even think of the idea of going into party buses? Well, and, that, and that's a great question. It initially started off with staying where I felt most comfortable, and I was within the actual IT space. So during the time of me going to my second career, because to your point, you hit it right on the head, right. I was unhappy in one scenario, yeah. and I switched and went to a different company yeah. to find myself in the same exact scenario. Right. The only difference was is that time. Yeah. I, I, I ended up spending majority of my time doing that transition to only find the same thing, that the grass was not greener on the other side. Right. I, I later realized that it was the same side, just a different section. Right. And one of the things I realized that you cannot get back, you can always make more money, you can always come up with newer and more innovative ideas, but the one thing that you cannot get back is time. Right. And it's because of that, that what, that's what really propelled me to say, you know what, now is the time to be able to make a difference and make a change in my life. The thing that I, that, that, that uh, just baffles me a lot of times is when we talk about, uh, is the comparison. So what keeps us in our current situations is we look at someone else and say, you know what, I may not be the happiest, but I'm happier than this person. Right. But I make more money than this person. Right. And that's where we go wrong at. Because right. the best example is when you go to the gym. When you go to the gym and oh, you're yeah. trying to lose weight yourself, yeah. you never look at someone else's body fat and say, you know what? As long as I'm under this person's body fat, I'm okay. Right. I'm good. Because in that case, we'll all be around here walking around obese. That's right. Right. So the, the, the goal is when you look at even the fundamentals of being an entrepreneur is you have to be able to look at your own body fat and set your own personal goals to say, you know what, right now, this is where I'm at at 23 percent. I need to get down to 16, 18 percent. And you measure your level of success amongst alongside of your own goals. Absolutely. And that's that's the key. So. 
when I looked at being an entrepreneur, I said, you know what? I have to start somewhere. Right. Yes, I can look at uh, person A and person B and see what they're doing to fundamentally uh, stay, uh, stay sound in being an entrepreneur. But the first thing I had to do is ask myself, one, is this something that I really want? Right. Right. Because doing something and, and saying it sounds great. Absolutely. I want to be a superhero. Right. But the moment that I go outside and it's too cold, That's I realize, right. you know what, this is not for me. Right. Not gonna work. You know, it's not gonna work. So being an entrepreneur, again, to your point, it, it's something, it's a decision that you have to make, and I always compare that to love. And and the reason why I compared it to is because it's 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 timeless. When you're an entrepreneur, any entrepreneur will tell you that that's a 24-hour job. Right. Uh, when you're in love, you you never stop loving. Right. You don't you don't wake up and say, you know what? I've loved enough today. Right. I've reached my love limit and I'm done. <laughs> right. You know. Nor do you say, you know what? This whole entire week, I've done you know X amount of hours of love, and that is just too much. Right. As an entrepreneur, I had to ask myself. If I was to do this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, would you love it? Would I love it? Right. That that was the first question. So these are the series of questions that you have to ask yourself because there are going to be challenges right. along the way. And I know we're going to talk about those challenges. Right. But these are some of the preliminary questions that you have to ask yourself from the assessment perspective. You know, does this make sense? Right. You know, when we talked about the superhero example, I looked at that assessment and said, okay, if it's too cold, will it make sense? No, nope. I, I came back to the drawing board to realize, Lance, you have to be a regular person. That's right. Okay. And it's the same thing when you look at being an entrepreneur. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I think that, um, a lot, like you mentioned, you referenced to love. I think that a lot of people, you know, they'll find something they like to do. Yes. And it, you know, and it becomes really a hobby. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's another thing. I, I know, I think a lot of people, they spend a lot of time talking about, you know, um, if they're going to be, uh, you know, finding like, you no, know, well, first off, if they're going to make the decision to actually become an entrepreneur, and then if they decide to become an entrepreneur, then they have to decide for themselves, you know, you know, is this something that I love to do, something I'm going to be doing for quite some time? And that plays a huge role, you know? So now, of course, there's many businesses that, that you could have gone into, you know, and then now how did you make that transition over from the tech space? Because uh, then I know that outside of Access Granite, there's also your other business as well, too, which we'll go into. And then now how did you make that transition from the tech space to now going into, let's say, the transportation business? Absolutely. So here's the thing. When I, it's two part answer okay. to that one. One is, when you look at life, there are fundamental things that will never change. And you have some things that are fads and some things that are just stationary. So when I looked at life holistically, I said, you know what, you're going to always need a place to stay, regardless of how much money you make or whatever. Right. That's one of those fundamental things that you say, you know what, I need to have a car, I need to have a place to stay. That's those right. are the things that you, that, you, that you list. In addition to that, technology. I did, you know, a quick analysis to say, you know, well, within the next 10 to 15 years, technology is still going to be here. And technically, that's my foundation with right. being in IT. And then I said, everybody's going to always want to celebrate something. Right. I don't care if they celebrate <laughs> life, yeah. a graduation, uh, somebody being married, somebody yeah. going on a night on a town, a divorce, you name it. Right. It's a reason to celebrate. <laughs> right. In somebody's mind. Yeah. And so when I looked at the assessment aspect of transportation and a party bus, it only made sense because I was able to incorporate technology into the bus. The second part of that is when I was in Atlanta and I was with one of my best friends and, you know, we looked, we looked, we were in the line at a club and I remember this like it was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And while we were in line waiting for entry, I looked in the street and I noticed there was this loud banging of good quality sound and I said I told myself wow what is that that automatically caught my attention and that's when my buddy said you know what that's a party bus and I said what a party bus said, right what? yeah what does that even consist of yeah now at this point is sparking my mind yeah and he said you know what uh, these people pay anywhere between 20 to 25 dollars or more to get on it's about 30 people it gets them from point A to point B and I yeah. said oh my god right so you need to tell me people are willing to pay to yeah. be stationed. It's mobile, yeah. but to be in one space together, right. and it makes sense. You yeah. want to be able to get tickets. And, I, and he said, yeah, man, this is, and I, and I saw the passion in his eyes. And I said, you know what? IT may not be the, you yeah. know, the niche, That's right. but I think you're onto something. 
And yeah. from there, we formulated Access Grant Chicago. Wow. And, you know, from there, it was a, you know, looking at the fundamentals, okay, what does it take to get started in Chicago? That's right. You know, it, and yeah. it was, it was the base, it was the baseline concepts, find a bus, yeah. make up a name, yeah. come up with the colors, yeah. and start from there. Wow. You know, it was the, it was the foundational four steps that you need before you actually bring it to life. And, you know, you look up today and wow. we're now working on a fourth bus with a, wow. a wonderful Vegas theme and with the top, in the top three, you know, wow. contenders when it comes to transportation. You know, I think that's huge because in Chicago, um, every market is competitive, no matter Absolutely. what industry you're in. And with you being in the transportation industry, now you're, of course, competing against, you know, the limits, the, the companies that's been doing it longer than you have. Limousine companies, things of that sort. And um, how do you guys continue to just grow your business? Because again, a lot of people start having these businesses mm -hmm. and we'll go into a little bit into, uh, you know, how you funded the business as well, too. Uh, with the team and everything, but more so going into how do you cons like keep that consistent growth, you know, or how do you always get like new clientele? Right. So, and again, I'll, I'll have to reference this to love again, or just yeah. relationships. I, yeah. See, a lot of times when you have nothing to be able to compare it to, the more strategic individuals are able to actually connect it to something so that it makes sense. Right. And the reason why I use relationships and love is because it's something that's been around for ages yeah. and you can always study that. You have enough material to study that. Yeah. So the problem that we have when it comes to relationships is that we become complacent. Right. Uh, we forget about the importance of dating and it's dating that you're at your best caliber. Yeah. You're, you're bringing your, your best A game. You're innovative. Your level of energy is, is throbbing and yeah. it's thriving because you want to be able to make an impression. Yeah. And so when I look at Access Grant Chicago, I use those same fundamentals. I say, you know what, let me let me, let me make sure that we're not complacent. Let me right. always continue to keep it fresh with you know innovating innovative ideas to look at the market and say what's currently not out there. All they're not doing electronic hookahs. All they're not doing, you know, the actual customizations that we're doing. All they're not offering the pricing that we're offering or just the overall experience. Right. So, you know, in looking at that and comparing those fundamentals, I always tell myself self-assessment on an individual basis and a company basis is very critical. So you always want to make sure that you, you know, always measure it on a weekly, daily basis and right. say, you know what, how's the company doing? Right. And and set those short-term goals and really, you know, become aggressive at those short-term goals as we do our long-term. Right. You know, it's sprinting versus, you know, the long haul. That's right. So as long as you keep yeah. that mentality, as long as you keep that idea uh, and passion as if it was the first day, yeah. you can't lose. That's right. Because you're constantly adjusting and, it's, and you learn in that process, it's okay to adjust. Right. Just like when you're in a relationship, you don't mind staying on the phone to two, three in the morning. Right. You don't mind. <laughs> you love what the you, right. you love what That's you do. Right. Yeah. And even if at that moment it's lust, you'll find a lot of similarities in lust that you do in love. Right. And so when you compare that and you transfer that over to the, to the, to the transportation company, the same thing. You, what, are those, what are those components? And you want to make sure that you have that so that when you look at it from a weekly basis, your employees are happy, right. uh, the customers are happy, right. and the company is growing. Right. And that's, that's what keeps it thriving. Awesome. You know, I think that um, a lot of people miss out on some key points that you just mentioned. And again, you know, referencing back to love because, you know, when the competition and I know every day is not the best day, every month's not the best month. But when you love doing it, you find yourself, of course, staying up late at night, researching, finding new trends, uh, finding, changing the theme. You Absolutely. know, we're, we're in Chicago, but people from Chicago travel to Vegas all the time. Mm -hmm. And then having that theme where they can at least it's not just a party bus where, you know, you guys are going the extra mile. Right. You know, you, when people are there, they, ex they expect speakers. They expect mm -hmm. some TVs, you know, a sober driver. They right. expect things <laughs> like that. So, um, but when you, when you start, you know, just thinking outside the box, I think that's what, because yeah. I see the reviews. A lot of people, right. they love the company and things right. of that sort. So, it's always good to see that. So, the next question is, um, it is, I think that a lot of people can, you know, can uh, go into this and, uh, you know, they have their ideas. They want to, uh, finance their businesses and things of that sort, and uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be transportation, but right. but of course that's what we're talking about with your company. Um, how do how were you able to fund that? Like, what was the, I know you don't have to go too deep into details, mm -hmm. you know, into you know 
I don't know, like lenders and stuff like that, but you just kind of go give us like an idea. Yeah. If someone wants to start, let's say, a transportation company um, or if they wanted to go into something where it the, the cost is similar, you know, how do you get funding for something like that? So my case being a, a unique case, because again, I started with the IT company. Right. And with the IT company, I was able to generate enough revenue. Okay. Um, and because I had that revenue in the actual account, yeah. I actually leveraged some of that revenue to be able to start up the actual uh, access granted company. Okay. Now, when we talk about self-assessment or self-evaluation, would I have done things differently? I think I would have done things differently. Okay. Uh, and what I would have done differently was I would have leveraged my credit because mm. at that time I had a pristine credit. Right. It was clean. Yeah. It was easy yeah. because I had the capital. I mean, yeah. everything was up to date. Yeah. Um, I stayed abreast on, you know, when the actual bill statement came out. Right. I mean, everything was because it was when, when you're financially stable, it reduces a lot of stress and it right. allows you to have a little bit more creativity That's on how you want to be able to utilize your money. Yeah. So what I would have done differently was I would have leveraged my credit. Yeah. use someone else's money yeah still had my own capital because i can still leverage that yeah. because it you know it is it's the power of money yeah i would have been able to still leverage that utilize someone else's money because my credit is at a certain status yeah and i would have been able to move a little bit differently you know no pun intended to the transportation right. company <laughs> but i would have been able to still have hold of my physical liquid cash right. while utilizing someone else's and on top of that building the actual company credit that's right. You know, so it, that would have been a two and one for me versus, you know, again, we're always taught that, you know what, if you have the money, utilize the money, right. don't utilize the credit. Right. And I, it really, it really gets under my skin a little bit because it's yeah. when you're able to utilize the credit and really strategize. Yeah. The, the richest people are ones who are not, who are not afraid of complexity. That's right. And we're taught that the more simpler things in life are, are, are happier or free. Yeah. And that's not always the case. Or paying cash. Or, or paying cash for it, you know. <laughs> uh, you know what, you got bad credit, don't worry about it. As long as you got cash, you're good to go. Right. Uh, you know, and again, it's it's a, it's a it's an approach that works because yeah. clearly I was able to utilize an approach right. to start up the company, but I would have been able to sprint more so than walk in the actual right. industry. Right. So right now I'm working on the fourth bus, but I probably would have had six buses by now. Right. You know, so it's it's not a you know you know what, Lance, you should feel bad. No, it's everything is about learning. That's right. And when you when you know more, when you know better, you do better. That's right. And that's the concept of self-evaluation. So, you know, that's that's what I would have done differently. And that's how, you know, we end up starting and, and funding the actual company. Wow. And I want you guys to pay attention to something major that he mentioned is that, uh, you know, again, he started with his own, you know, with his own capital. He had the business that he had started right before uh, Access Granted. And he took, you know, some of that money and said, you know what, I can do this. But he also said that, you know what, um, you know, had I had credit, we would have been going a little bit faster at least. Yeah. And that plays a role. And again, this is not a credit call. This is, you know, start having a, a successful business. And then, of course, saying, you know what, OK, I can probably do it that way. Because I think sometimes people make too many excuses. Yeah. They'll say things like, well, my credit is not the best. They don't even think about saving the money, right. you know, or they, you know, or the vice versa. They say, you know, my credit is, you know, my credit is great, but I just want to make sure I get the highest score. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to have the highest interest rate, so I just I'll wait a little bit, right. and they don't do anything. You know, right. they just become stagnant. So um, now that's the next thing. What type of advice would you give people um, who are looking to? They have that that idea, mm -hmm. something sparked their interest, or something has pissed them off at their job, and yeah. they said, you know what? I think I can start my own yeah. XYZ. Uh, what type of advice would you give, you know, uh, fellow entrepreneurs? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, in today's world, I'm, I'm happy social media wise because I'm seeing a lot of people start their business, right? From being an entrepreneur, you know what? I'm going to start my own company, whether it is a t shirt company, all the way down to customized mugs. Right. Right. So I'm really happy to be able to see the the entry into being a consultant. I'm, I'm sorry, into being an uh, entrepreneur. Yeah. However, it's the the thing that I would say is that you'll soon realize that it's a lot. It's easier to get into it. Right. It's about the sustainability uh, to be able to weather the storm and excel at it. So my first thing was always, you always want to do your homework on the front end yeah. when you're at your most comfortable state. Even if you're frustrated, 
Yeah. Believe it or not, that is a better state to be at than to quit your job and say, you know what, I'm going to come up with a plan then. Yeah. Because what comes knocking at your door, there's two things that will never change. Bills yeah. and time. <laughs> and, and, and as time comes, bills come right behind it. Right. Right. So the first thing that I would say for those who are looking to become an entrepreneur yeah. is really uh, transform, come up, you dreaming. Yeah. dreamers right so that's yeah. that's where it starts at it starts off with a dream and idea allow that to manifest and mature not too long right but just enough where you right. know you can say you know what Absolutely. i know exactly where at least i want to be that's right right so i'm not saying you know uh when, when you start off you ask you have you have to ask yourself what state do you want to be in that's right do you want to be in, do you want to be in illinois yeah you know what where do you want to be Right. right, so that's, yeah. that's the dreaming stage. Yeah. When you get past that stage and you realize, okay, this is what it is. Now it's time to narrow it down. What city do you want to be in? Okay. You know, so you narrow your scope down a little bit to say, okay, I realize that um, I want to start a dance company. Okay. Uh, then you then you narrow it down to the city and say, you know what, I want it to be hip hop. I want it to be you know salsa. Yeah. And you narrow that niche down. And the assessments the assessment phase is so critical to the overall scope of your you know, experience, because yeah. that's what it is, um, that you want to spend as much time there. Because you want to look at what does it cost financially to be able to, to ramp that up. Yeah. You know, one of the things I learned from playing uh, one of the games, uh, Cash Flow, is that really, really quickly, is that you want to be able to have three to four months saved up. Yeah. Whereas when I first played it, I said, oh, you know what? I want to go straight in, and I want to be able to pay off everything quickly. Okay. Well, the thing is about you want to be slow and steady. You want to make sure that you are financially stable to be able to transition from your nine to five into the being an entrepreneur. Right. And then you want to look at your support because I always tell people in life you have time, it is money, and resources. Those are the three things. That's right. And I always ask people when they whenever they tell me I want to be an entrepreneur, I say looking at these three categories: time, money, and resources. What, where does your importance lie? Mm. You know, and I, and I pose that question and people give me different variations. Yeah, yeah. And I always tell them that, you know, the, your resources are important to you because they in turn reduce the amount of time that you need, right. whether it's to do research or to complete a task, yeah. because um, that's one of the things that we, that we fail in because we have the I mentality. You know what? I will get it done. Right. Well, you know what? If you're building in your analysis phase from yeah. being an entrepreneur, yeah. you begin to build your team around you. That's right. Uh, so once you have your team, once you have the finances in place, then it's time to execute. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about a light launch. I'm talking about you have to give it your all. Yeah. You have to be able to push this vehicle as if your life depended on it. Yeah. You have to imagine yourself literally underneath the car or somebody that you love in a space, an uncomfortable space. Yeah. And you have to say, you know what? I'm going to, with all my might, push and give this my all. Yeah. Because if I don't, if I shortchange it, I won't get the outcome that I need. And sometimes we, I saw a video that said, you have to want success or being an entrepre entrepreneur as much as you want to breathe. That's right. You know, and, yeah. and, and we don't realize how important breathing is until we get a cold. That's right. And then when we get that cold, we say, oh, you know man. what, man, I can't wait just to breathe again. Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and it's and it's that level of seriousness that you have to be able to have it yeah. on a daily consecutive basis. So that's what we talk about, again, going back to that love fundamentals. Yeah. Are, in that analysis phase, am I doing something that I that's a hobby yeah. or am I doing something that I love? Right. And you have to be real with yourself. Right. Because if it's a facade... Just like with any other thing, time will reveal itself. Right. And those are the things that I would focus on prior to being, you know, even making a decision to say, is yeah. it something that I want to do? Right. You know, when you're in being an entrepreneur, once you've stepped over that threshold, yeah. now, the, now the game starts. Yeah. Right. And everything for me is always an analogy because I want people to relate. Yeah. So... When you get when you when you first wanted a car, you wanted a car so bad. You, yeah. you go to the dealership and say, you know what? I can take just any car as long as I have four wheels and right. I get behind a wheel. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and we say that this is the first car. When you don't have it. That's right. Oh yeah. Right. So right. it's something when you don't have. Yeah. But the moment that you get it, it's not about getting the car. You soon learn that it's not about getting the car. It's sustaining the car. That's right. And you have what it takes to maintain the car. Yeah. You know, do, can you afford the insurance? Yeah. Can you afford when something happens? Because it will happen. It I will get happen. to see a perfect car right. that lasts me from the time in which I walked off the lot yeah. until I was able to turn to my 
you know, to turn in the car and get a new car. Right. So you have to, again, be able to understand things are going to happen. Right. In your day-to-day -day journey of being an entrepreneur, you're going, to come, you're going to come across days when you don't even feel like getting out of bed. Yeah. Where you feel like you have to trap yourself in the closet just to be able to, you know, really uh, do that level of self-evaluation and say, where, where am I at with this? Right. You're going to come into financial slumps. Yeah. You know, it's going to be highs and lows, just yeah. like any market that you're in. Yeah. And you have to be able to say you, and, and do an evaluation. You know, when you're at your highs, who's, who's with you? That's right. And when you're at your lows, who's with you? Yeah. And, fi and find those people. And then that, that's where you begin to really, you know, shape and manifest who you are as an entrepreneur and what the business truly means to you. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's a couple of things that you touched on. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, um, they forget to think about. Because most people, it's easier for us to be, you know, in a work setting and for us to just go into something where um, we're used to being told what to do. Absolutely. And then making that transition from being now an owner and then starting to build that team, putting the, putting the right people in place. Otherwise, you'll be doing everything yourself. Absolutely. You know, and of course, in our own minds, nobody will ever do it like we would or as best as we would absolutely you know and i remember mm -hmm. being a manager at mcdonald's and i just would rather do it myself mm -hmm. you know to have somebody else do it and that's the thing where i think a lot of entrepreneurs they forget to delegate absolutely. you know and then trying to find people to fill in those blanks absolutely so but either way i don't want to keep you too long this evening but i do have one last question well um you, go ahead it sparks this is so it's so interesting and you go mentioned ahead. that two things mindset shift yeah and also understanding that 50% of you is far more greater than 100% of me. Absolutely. Which means that if I have five people doing a task at 50%, yeah. that is going to equate to, what, 250% exactly. that's always going to outnumber my 100%. The thing about me is that, it, or any individual, you're always going to fatigue. Yeah. And you choose or dictate the amount of fatiguing that you will endure. Yeah. So the more help you have, the less fatigue you, you actually endure. Yeah. Right? That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is, is that the mindset shift. For the longest, up until whenever you decide to cross that threshold of being an entrepreneur, yeah. you're, you're conditioned to be a worker. Yeah. The moment that you say, you know what, I am going to explain, I'm going to tell myself that there is no such thing as a ceiling and success is predicated on how high that I want to go. Mm. Once you understand that concept, you then realize, you know what, I have to be an owner. I have to be the captain of my success. That's right. No longer will I have to go to uh, a manager or a supervisor and say, hey, I think I meet these qualifications. That's right. You have to understand the importance of self-evaluation. Yeah. And just like when I tell people, when they point at individuals for, you know, areas for improvement, you have to understand the amount of percent, the percentage that says, how much is self-evaluation to me? Yeah. You know, the moment that I begin to do self-evaluation for myself and yeah. really begin to elevate myself, that's when I'll be able to excel and get to that next level. And that's where we, that's where a lot of entrepreneurs run into a lot of roadblocks is because they're they're re, trying to recondition their mindset from the employee mindset to being the actual owner. Yeah. And accountability is different. Oh yeah. But it, yes, it is a lot more pressure. But this is something that you want. That's what some, that's that's what comes with the package. That's right. You know. And Will Smith said it best when he said that the you positive thinking, and that's yeah. a, that's another you know, component that you have to have. Yeah. But the moment that you have positive thinking and you begin to kind of project that into the world, yeah. the universe is going to get out of your way. Yeah. Because because what you feel is a mere combination of what you see and what you think. That's right. So if you think negative in being an entrepreneur, just like they say uh, two things can't dwell in the same space. That's right. Yeah. You know, faith and fear. The yeah. same thing. Negativity and being an entrepreneur cannot dwell in the same space. Yeah. Because if you want to be negative, you have you're going to end up transitioning back to that nine to five. Correct. Absolutely. If you notice, those two things go together. Yeah. And when you're talking about being successful, I've never heard anybody say that successful was heavy. Right. But when they're down and they're out, or they're 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 not as happy as they could be. They talk about the weight that it is. Yeah. So the the quicker you have to go back to that escalator example. If you want to move at that pace, That's you right. have to remove all of those negative thoughts. You have to remove mm -hmm. all those negative people. You have to remove all of those 
you know, those ambitions that don't match up to where you want to be in life. Right. And once you remove that, you can technically be Superman. That's right. You may, <laughs> you can move at, as, yeah. at, a, at a lightning speed that you would have not been able to move had you not removed those variables from your life. Yeah. So I think that's another component that we forget about uh, when we talk about being an entrepreneur and sustaining to be an entrepreneur. Absolutely. You know, it's a couple of things you touched on. Because I think that um, a lot of people, you know, they forget about changing their, well, I won't say changing, but knowing how important it is to remain positive as an entrepreneur. Because bad things, well, I won't say bad things, but sometimes things happen that you don't expect. Absolutely. You know, um, of course, it always looked good on the whiteboard, yeah. you know, but at the same time, you know, it always like to look at it as, you know, like the coach. When he draws, when he draws up the play, it always is going to work on, on the paper. Oh, yeah. You know, but then you run the play. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. Absolutely. And I think that uh, as entrepreneurs, we have to protect our mindset. Absolutely. And, uh, wow. you know, whether it's, you know, books or whether it's audio, uh, sometimes the people you hang around. Absolutely. You know, all that plays a role because we, we, will, we do have those times and we have wow. to protect that. So um, now what are the, and then I'll wrap up with this, uh, what are some, um, I would say, future aspirations, not just for this company, but for yourself, do you see yourself, you know, adding any more businesses later down the line? Well, what's interesting is, is that, and this is very powerful. You said you have to be able to protect your mindset. That's right. In your mind, because that is the most valuable asset that you will forever have. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize how important that is until either we get a lot older and we have Alzheimer's yeah. or when we realize the individuals that are attacking those things. Yeah. And so that is so like, wow, I'm going to utilize that. I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm going to, I'm going to use that yeah. because it's important. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about the level of advancement, it's, it's almost like the gym, you know, yeah. where you, you, you reach a certain plateau where you feel successful, where you have the, the, the good body type, where you feel comfortable, you feel right. beach ready. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Right now, when it comes to the companies, I feel beach ready. Yeah. However, I want to be able to chisel down some areas. I want to be able to do the self-evaluation in yeah. each of the companies because for me, providing opportunities for uh, individuals who feel like or who didn't get the chance to go the educational route, yeah, that's, that's one of our fundamental practices in each one of our companies. It's being able to provide opportunities for those who felt like visually or socially they were not accepted right and so because we understand the importance of their most valuable asset which is their mind yeah we want to be able to look at reaching continue to reach out to those individuals because i was one of those individuals right you know being a living testimony to say that yes education is indeed important but it doesn't have to be by way of an actual institution that's right you know we have so many other mediums that can be utilized yeah. and maximized yeah. so that we can be great yeah. so it's really you know doing what we're doing right here getting the message out that's right really showing people that you know we have people around us that yeah. uh, will allow us to be successful yeah. And once we understand the importance of someone else's mind in addition to ours, we can learn to then reduce the amount of time that it takes us to get to that next level. Right. So, you know, just like just like me knowing you, you yeah. know, when I look at that as an example, uh, a, a triple entrepreneur in, in multiple yeah. facets. So yeah. whenever I have any tax questions that I have or yeah. ways to be able to improve my credit, yeah. you know, I can instead of me going online and spending hours yeah. to try to figure out the, the answer, right. I have the luxury of being able to call you to say, hey, yeah. Calvin, what can I do to increase my credit? Yeah. Because this is my game plan. That's right. So my game plan is to be able to expand. Yeah. And as I talked about earlier in the presentation, was, hey, you know what? This is what I would have done differently. I would have yeah. utilized my credit. Yeah. So now I want to be able to, in order for me to expand to the levels I want to get to, yeah. I want to be able to utilize my credit more. I want to be able to utilize really other people's money. Yeah. Uh, and I say that in the best way because they also receive a financial benefit from that as well, right. from the interest. But I want to be able to utilize other people's money uh, to be able to expand the IT company, Hall Group Solutions, to be able to expand uh, access brand in Chicago yeah. so that way it is without a shadow of a doubt transportation wise the experience the night on the town yeah. when you think about partying or you know an event space on wills access granted automatically comes up that's right. and that's where I want to be able to get it and no I won't measure it by everyone every other company's success I want to be able to measure it by my own goals my own short and long-term goals to say this is where I want us to be 
Yeah. And if I've done my self-evaluation and homework, this should land us on top, but I want us to be able to hit these goals in their proper time. That's right. Well, first off, we do want to thank you uh, for actually taking out the time to uh, do the interview. Absolutely. And uh, I know it's, um, this is something that you guys have been working on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I just think it's a great platform you know, for you all to be doing what you're doing. So, and of course, we want to thank you all. Uh, you know, so obviously you guys can hear us okay. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are from Boston. Everyone's watching this. So, thank you guys so much uh, for actually, you know, watching uh, the video and things of that sort. So, well, uh, really quickly, um, yeah. two things. One, uh, I want to be able to see from you guys out there, you know, a lot of times you guys have questions uh, when it comes to being an entrepreneur. You have questions when it comes to, you know, currently being in the business uh, what questions that you guys may have when it comes to just, you know, being an entrepreneur uh, and why you guys are taking a little time there and generating the questions. Um, I want to take the time out to, you know, thank Calvin, um, the A50 Club, you know, the, the, the support, the amazing support system that I have uh, around me, Jessica Johnson, uh, for being that right hand one man uh, to be able to assist in, you know, really getting us to that next caliber, that next level. Uh, and, you know, kind of solidifying the importance of having somebody right there by your side as you continue to grow and mature, uh, both uh, personally and then also from a company perspective as well. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching. Now, also, like you said, did you guys have any questions at all? This is an added piece that I didn't know if he was going to be comfortable doing or not. Uh, do you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns uh, before we go ahead and wrap everything up? Because uh, I know there's a lot of you know, business owners that are out there. And they said to themselves, you know what, uh, you know, how do I get started? You know, uh, what, how do I come up with the plan or whatever the case may be? And of course, we'll always, I'm sure we'll always, you know, track back a little bit down the line. So we do have a question. What's the best way to come up with a business plan uh, to ensure that your business uh, is profitable? That's a very good question because, you know, a lot of people start businesses, but they're not profitable. Right. So, yeah, how Absolutely. do you do that? So the first, so it's a cup. So with, with that question, that's a great question. So when you look at developing a business plan, one, there's, there's a lot of templates that are out there to be able to build the base foundation of starting your actual business plan. But more importantly, there are actually free companies uh, that are in your surrounding area that will help you look at um, project scope, financial uh, forecasting, and all of the other requirements that's needed in order to effectively build that business plan out. Because like we talked about earlier, yes, it's a lot, it's very easy to start something. But when you talk about looking at forecasting financially, you want to be able to look at, you know, market, what does the market look like for that particular area that you're in? What's the profits that you're going to gain? Um, and where are you going to come at? What do you need financially to be able to start that? Right? So it's one thing to say, hey, I can make X amount of dollars, $300,000 in this particular market, but what's the actual startup cost? Because you, it's, it's a progressive you know, type of ordeal where you have your short-term goals and your long-term goals. And all of that is gonna be itemized in that business plan to ensure that you have all the tools required uh, in order to be successful. Awesome. And you know what's so funny is that um, you know, a lot of people, they just jump right into something. Yeah. I've had business ideas and you know, I didn't wanna be the guy to just jump straight into something and, you know, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, that, that question was asked is because sometimes you need a business plan. You know, Absolutely. Things cost money, you know, so that's, that's the thing, you know, and uh, you don't want to just, I mean, again, you know, I'm all about taking risks and things of that sort. But when you start spending money, you know, this isn't like, you know, when I was younger, I was selling candy chips and juices. Yeah. So that was, you're talking, you know, a $20 you know, investment mm -hmm. versus, you know, $20,000 or, right. you know, how, to, how to much a bus costs, you know, so, right, right, right. but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, does anyone have any questions, comments or concerns uh, before we go ahead and wrap up and uh, be sure, by the way, um, you know, be sure to go ahead and follow uh, Access Granite Chicago. If you, now you guys know that uh, where you guys can go if you guys are looking for, you know, an affordable party bus company for whatever the occasion may yeah. be. Right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's coming here from my uh, inbox. Oh, wow. So <laughs> someone says, at, at what point or if at all did you feel like giving up? Great question. Um, so when we talk about the success of companies, you're going to have your highs and your lows. So remember we talked about the importance of having people by your side. I can count on, I have a couple people that are very remarkable in you know, key components in my life. Uh, Jessica Johnson being one of them. 
Uh, and believe it or not, from the transportation, uh, John as well, one of my uh, lead mechanics. So there was there was a couple of occasions and times where you know the bus may have not been at its fullest com full you know fullest capacity, and it was very frustrating because I was dealing with issue after issue after issue, and it got to the point where. You know, I looked at the actual financial gain and I looked at the exit strategy and it was very close <laughs> and I had a decision to make. And, you know, a, mo a lot of times you'll be emotional in your decisions, right? Because it's, it's, it's something that you love and it's something that you're passionate about. But that's the important thing about having great people around you, because the moment that I said, you know what, I, I think I'm done with this. The yeah. people around me, you know, said, you know what, Lance, they reminded me. They became that positive voice that we talked about and a voice of reasoning to say, you know what, now is not the time and we're going to get through this and this is what we're going to do in order to get through it. And so, you know, yes, there was a couple of times that I really wanted to be able to give up, but it's those positive people that I had around me that, that really helped me push through when we talk about that vehicle, push past that, you know, that, that, that process, that, that, that ability to, you know, want to give up. So. That's very key. Yeah. Very key. What other questions you got? Just, yeah, I still like you guys been sending him messages, sending him questions and all that. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. So this one here is from... Hi, my name is Stan. Sorry, Stan. <laughs> Just a second here. While he's looking for and that... I do, I do apologize. I cannot pronounce this uh, Nadidi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Pleasure. Yep. Um, she said... When you look at a business, how do you come up with the name and the colors? Uh, it's going to be on a case by case. Yeah. Graphic um, design. And who designed the actual yeah. logos? So uh, for a lot of my design, uh, Jessica Johnson did a lot of the graphic designs. Um, and then as far as the the name and the color, uh, my best friend uh, Ibrahimi actually came up with the design for Access Granite Chicago and also the colors. And so if you notice in the logo, it would be like a lion and he's a Leo. So, you know, blah, 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 you know, things like that. But uh, essentially, he was the one that uh, came up with the overall just logo and concept. That's good to know. Isn't that something? Yes. <laughs> Make sure you guys follow. Uh, going, well, not just follow, like the page. Uh, you know, of course, now you guys know Promise coming up for the weddings. If you guys just know your birthday parties, uh, you know, girls night out, guys night out. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, packing up into an Uber. Uber can only hold so many people, you know. So you want to have a good time, make sure you guys uh, go to uh, Access Grand in Chicago, of course, here in Chicago. So somebody's are funny. Uh, <laughs> so how much time would you say is allocated per week for your companies? So that's a very good question. Again, and we talked about the love aspect. Again, it being compared to love. You, you never really gauge the time when you when you when you're doing something that you love. You can ask any basketball player, you know, anybody that loves to go play pool. Sometimes they get they get lost in what it is that they're doing. Where their husbands or their wives have to call them back and say, you know, what, it's time to come home. Right. And it, and it's and it's they're calling them because uh, we've we've agreed to be lost in something that we love. So our allocation wise, I probably say I wake up thinking about my companies. Um, so that starts the clock until I actually close my eyes and physically go to sleep, right? So you can almost say that it is indeed a 24-hour fun obligation. And the way that you challenge yourself is, is that I asked Jessica, we, we work on a current project, and we always laugh and, you know, challenge ourselves mentally. We said, you know, if we wanted a million dollars today, would we still go to work the next day? Wow. And both of us said, without a shadow of a doubt, we yeah. would still go to work. We would still complete the projects. Yeah. And and when you get to that point, you realize that it's not about the money. You truly love what it is that you do. What is it you do? And your 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 character, your willingness to be able to start and complete an actual task becomes far more valuable than the actual dollar amount itself. Now, you you'll notice that the entrepreneur mindset will say that. But then if you ask someone who works nine to five, nine out of 10, they'll say if they do go to work, it's more than likely to put their hands on somebody that's been really frustrating them. It's to let the boss know in the most creative way, <laughs> I quit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that the list will continue to go on and on. So 
Yes, um, that's when you know that you truly love what you do and time is not a factor of your level of success. It's just a matter of when and you control the when. Wow. Yeah. There you go. All right, so I'm just going to I'm going to go through one more question here. It's a good and thing you checked this phone. <laughs> I would I would have felt bad, you know. Yeah. Just a second here. Why he's doing that? Again, make sure you guys go to the page, Access Grand Chicago. Make sure you guys give it a like. If you've, um, of course, if you like this video, give it a review. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, you know, again, you you can tell how the company is going to go when you are uh, looking at, you know, the people who actually they're, they're running the company and things of that sort. They care about people. They care enough to do something like this, and uh, that's what it could be. Uh, we got a question here. Oh, you got one. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, how important is promoting your business, especially when starting a business? Also, the best way to promote your business to ensure uh, business continues to come through the door. So that's a great question. So uh, marketing is is a very key component to your overall success. Visibility, right? Because with, and that's one of the things when you look at it from a business plan perspective, visibility, marketing, what's your marketing plan going to be and the financial aspect that's required in order to be successful. Social media is a great free outlet that's, that's now utilized, which does a, a lot of financial reductions uh, to be able to market your business. And marketing is so important because without marketing, people cannot see your craft. They, cannot, they can't see the, the hard work that you put into uh, the projected outcome. So when we talk about the transportation business, prime example, what good is the craftsmanship uh, what good is it if we have, you know, individuals, with, if we have the most pristine bus, if no one can see it? Right. You know, so yeah. marketing is, is, is the key component thing that's going to get your bus out there. That's going to allow for your company to be able to soar. And in marketing, you have to be very careful with that because marketing puts pressure on the realities of what you represent. Yeah. So if I am what I put out there into the universe it, the expectation is that it should match up to what's being marketed. So mark, all pressure is not a bad pressure. It's not, it's not a bad thing. You know, so sometimes you need that level of pressure. So the moment that you put it out there, just like a dream, just like a wish list, it has to happen. You know, you have to be able to utilize and leverage marketing. And my thing is, is that when it comes to social media, utilize that Facebook is a great avenue to be able to market your business, to be able to really push it out there and really encourage others to be able to utilize your company and also encourage yourself too because if you're not proud of what it is that you've worked endless days in and days out to to, to craft you know craft together then you will tell by the level of confidence that you do when you're marketing so it's, it's almost again just like a relationship you know if you're not proud of who you're with you notice that they'll they'll be slid to the side mm -hmm. but the, the prouder is the individual who can, you know, really project and showcase what they've put together, you know, and everybody's individual company is a representation of them. So you want to make sure that your marketing is at the utmost, you know, uh, quality of level um, and you're, you're, you're doing a due diligence to make sure that you get the word out there. Awesome. Awesome. Well. Is it the, the last question you had too? Or that's pretty oh, nice? I just had uh, one okay. more from Bobby here. Um, it said, with growing up on the south side of Chicago, you mentioned the stresses that it took in order to become successful. Do you think that being on the south side of Chicago helped or hindered your level of success? Wow. Uh, good question. I, I feel like growing up on the south side of Chicago gave me a good balance. And what I mean by that is, is that there are, going to be, there are times in your company where you have to have a strong foundation. And the, the best thing to me that, that just gets me to that next level of success is when somebody, say, when somebody will say, you can't do something. And growing up on the south side of Chicago, going to Chicago public schools, there's always expectations that are either not set or not high enough. And they say, you know what, if you went to Chicago Public Schools, there's no way that you can reach this, this level, yeah, this caliber. Right. And, I, and I love hearing that. So with me being, you know, growing up on the south side of Chicago, it was very tremendous in detriment. It was, 
you know, instrumental in my level of success. And it was detrimental to the individual who said that because they, I was able to bring that, uh, that, that, that ability to say that I could not do something to life. And I was able to leverage that um, to be successful. So words of, what did it say? The power of life or death lies within the tongue. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to either allow somebody's words to slow you down and allow you to not be successful, or you're gonna, or you can use those same words to propel you to that next level and say, you know what, I'm going to be successful, and not only am I going to be successful, I'm going to come back and show you how successful I am through my actions. That's right. That's right. We did get. We had another question that just came in. Uh, did you leave your job after making a certain amount of income uh, in your business? Or when did you know it was the best time to leave your job? I think it's a huge that, question. That is, that is yeah. very huge. <laughs> oh, man. I mean. Because <laughs> you know everyone's always on that edge. Yes. Yes. You know, absolutely. So, yeah. Great, great question. When did, I, when did I actually go full entrepreneur? So that's a tough question. That's, who asked that question? <laughs> I appreciate the question. Um, so when, and that's a tricky question. Because when I. How do I answer this? All right, I got it. So when I was in college, I always had that entrepreneur spirit. So it was always running in the background. So anyone will tell you, they said, when, when you think of Lance, he's always wanted to come up with a plan where when I was in college, I said, you know what, if I can just get a $200 TV and sell X amount of raffle tickets, not only would I be able to bless someone with a TV, but I'll also be able to make double that revenue to be able to you know, expand financially. So I've always had that entrepreneur spirit. Um, I actually took the leap of faith. So a buddy of mine told me about the opportunity to be an independent consultant in the IT world. I felt confident that it could work. And I, I, I actually had my luau, my annual luau. And at the moment of me making that decision, I had everyone that prayed over me. And I took the leap of faith. I went without... Any level of financial backing, I, there was no half foot in, half foot out. Let me do it part time. No, I, I put in my two week notice. I put my lease was up. I gave my just paid vehicle off to my sister and off I was to Atlanta. So is that is that a recommended approach? It is on a case by case basis, right? Because some people who are just as successful will say, I've done it part time for X amount of time. So your comfort level will really depend on the individual. I'll also be the same person who says, you know what, if I go to the casino, I'm going to put $500 on red and play <laughs> roulette and say, if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm right. You know, you, and, and just respectfully so, you have some people who will like to kind of, you know, parse it out and say, you know what, let me first try with $5 and see what comes back. Um, so it really depends on the individual, but I am that same individual who will jump out of a plane doing skydiving and go scuba diving. So I like to challenge fear because when you challenge fear, it's easy to gauge your level of success because you come into it nervous, scared, and the unknown. And it's not until you get that, you come into that same environment and then you then ask yourself or you come back to it and say, am I now, am I no longer fearful? How do I feel? Am I comfortable? Right. You know, and that's where you can gauge your level of success. So I encourage fear. I encourage uncomfortability because that's my approach to gauge how successful I have become and where I want to be. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for taking Absolutely. the time out to actually do uh, this interview. Uh, we thank you all, too, uh, for taking your time out to be here. Uh, be sure and go check out uh, the Facebook business page. For Access Grand in Chicago. Uh, be sure to like it. Uh, be sure to uh, book them as well too if you're in the area, if you guys uh, plan on traveling uh, to Chicago. They're easy to find, of course, on Facebook, on, on the web as well too. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Rashonda. Uh, thank you, everybody who was able to actually be uh, on this, uh, you know, on this live interview. Um, of course, we thank you guys for the questions and things of that sort. Um, this is just the first uh, secure the bag interview and uh, we're going to of course inv interview more successful businesses uh, that people should know about again everyone's entrepreneurs but we try to find of course uh, you know top people doing what they are doing uh, as I know a lot of people they're looking to start that business walk away from their job and continue to have a profitable uh, business so thank you so much we appreciate your time absolutely and, all right hey listen guys I wanted to end on this you got to understand and ask yourself the, the what's in the well 
will come up in the bucket. So you want to make sure that where you're pouring your energy, it's in a positive location because what you do and what you project out into the earth is essentially what you have around you. So whatever, when if you if you're able to to kind of you know utilize that bucket and pour into other people, make sure that you're looking at the glass half full and half and not half empty because that's going to be the that's going to be the critical component to your success. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being able to attend. Thank you guys for the questions. And again, it's always good to be first. <laughs> that's right. All right, then you guys have a good one. All right.